Oh God, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I really do. I, I, I have to tell you this. Just bear with me and take a pause for a minute and think about this. They can't come with you. I know and it hurts. You got soul ties, you got relationships, you got friends. But sometimes, a lot of them, you can't take them with you when you're stepping into your purpose, when you're fulfilling your call. They, because not because you don't want them to come with you, but I'm talking about the naysayers, those who they're friends with you now, they with you now, and they even believe that they support your dreams and, and they see the, the call on your life. But when you step into that role, they're not going to be able to handle it. They're not. You can still get your life back. As I was saying, because <laughs> we do, of course, most of us, we want to bring people with us, you know, people who seen us as we grew and we evolve and in, in our development and even our purpose and our gifts and our calling. And they see the evolution and the maturation and some of them was even part of it. Some of them even contributed to us and invested in us. But the sad thing is, you know, you guys know, I talk a lot about the things that we battle with on the inside. A lot of times they have private and secret or subconscious insecurities that do not surface until you change, you grow, you develop. And they find out like, wow, I am jealous of my friend or I'm, I'm good with her or him as long as we are on the same level, as long as we are dealing with the same issues. But when one of us start to make it out, when one of us become delivered or grow and overcome that thing, what happens is, is it gets lonely being in a pit by yourself. I mean, come on, you know, misery loves company. Misery loves company. Catch it. So now that you're stepping out of the misery pot, you're coming out of the pit, you're coming out of the prison, out of the dungeon, <laughs> out of the valley, and they feel, well, first of all, they find themselves still there, you know, till their time to come out if they want to come out. But when you leave them there, and think about it in the flesh, the flesh is like, oh my God, you're not going to be here with me anymore. You know, and so because they're feeling that, sometimes it supersedes their feelings of celebrating you. They should be celebrating you, right? They should be happy for your successes. And sometimes they become their own blessing blockers because if they're able to come out of their own stupor or realize that sometimes a part of your destiny is a part of theirs too. And they maybe they're supposed to come along your side with you. But those emotions, those core beliefs don't allow them to do that. So they continue to stay in the pity party. When you have, when you've said, I can't stay in the pity party no more. God is bringing me out. Or I decided to submit in order to walk in my godly purpose. You know, the first part of this series I'm doing, and it's just a two part series. If a third one pop up, then you'll know about it. Um, the first podcast episode was, you know, watch out for your godly Purpose troopers, because God had these people that he sent in your life. And I'm telling you, even if you falter, even if there's a delay, even if you temporarily give up or, or just have to stop, whatever the case is, there's people that because God wants you to live on purpose. He wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. He tells us that in his word. And so he will send people in your life to undergird you, to help you, to push you so you can stay in the pressing because you want to experience the blessing. And he's so awesome like that. And so now it's your season and you're about to move up. You're about to step into the place that God already ordained, had already ordained for you before you entered into your mother's womb. He called you. And now, because we got a journey we got to go through. That's why, you know what? Let's not get caught up when people are going through certain things that have a call in their life. Because Maybe and maybe because of rebelliousness or disobedient, they end up in situations. But when the hand of God is on their life, don't talk about them so much. Build them up. 
You can acknowledge and judge their behavior, but don't condemn them because they, God understands each and every one of us. Those of us who belong to God are his children, right? Those of us who acknowledge him as father, we're his children. So you understand, and God understands that, okay, that child may not listen immediately. You know, we all different. Just like when, the way we raise in our parents' homes and, I, and we compare ourselves to our siblings. Some of us was a little more um, easier to raise. Some of us listen to our parents more because we, we reverence them more, right? That type of fear. And then you have some of us, whether it's us or our siblings, who were more rebellious. They had to fall off the cliff several times before they got the message. Don't you think God knows that already? Don't you think he know already the way that you take? Okay, this, so he's like, this child, this one going to have to bump ahead a couple of times before she get it. But I, I'm still with him. I'm still with him. <laughs> the Bible says God is married to the backslider. And I like the example he showed in prophet Hosea when he told her him to take back his adulterous wife. Can, can we, we need to read that. Go read the book of Hosea. Okay. <laughs> but, oh Lord, I hope I got the right prophet. You know, sometimes I be going and going like, oh, did I get the right? <laughs> but I'm saying it's just, you just never know the hand, the plan of God. He makes, he gives us grace. He gives us mercy, right? Ah, grace and mercy brought me this far. Grace will never leave us. While we in the dispensation of grace, that's a whole nother teaching. Okay. But that's what we're under right now. So God made room for that. That's the one reason why he sent his son. That's the one reason why he sent us the Holy spirit to lead and guide us into all truth, to convict us of, of wrongdoing. So that's help. Now, how you interpret it or perceive it, that's on you. You know, I'm always talking about the way you perceive things. And it's funny. I just had a, a counseling session with a family and I asked the child, I said, how do you, what is your understanding of rules and regulations? Actually, this is a coaching session, sorry. And the child said, uh, and she was on the right track. She was like, they're there to keep me from getting in trouble. I said, right, they're there to protect you. Cause I said, oftentimes we think when our parents give us rules and regulations, they're the harm us. So they don't want you to do nothing. They don't want you to have a life. They don't want you to hang out with your friends. You don't understand that we've been here a little longer. We also have to protect you. Rules are to protect you. I said rules and, and are there to help you in life. When you get out into the world, out of your parents' home, you're going to have to follow rules and regulations on your job, in school, in college, just out there in the world, period. <laughs> so if you don't learn that at home, then you'll be a wayward person just out there, not listening, not respecting authority, not respecting anybody, just you, yourself and I, but that kind of mentality is going to get you in trouble. So now going back to now being your season to do what God has called you to do or to, you know, this, that's the spiritual side. But then you got the other side where you decided I am going to live in my purpose right now. I see, I got it. God gave me the green light. You know, I've been healed. And if you had to go through some, you know, some kind of situation where it kind of took you out for a moment, but now you back, you got your strength back and you ready to run. That other, sometimes those people that's been with you, they're not going to get it. They're not going to understand it or they will understand it, but they just not ready to let you go yet. You got to watch out for them. So it's not like you think you're better than them. You had a better place. Hallelujah. And you're ready to step into that next level. And sometimes they can't come. They can't come, boo. They, not now. You know what? Maybe they'll come later. Because like I said, everybody has their day, right? So maybe they will come later. But And, and you know what? <laughs> and I know sometimes you think, wow, this person going to be with me. You know, today they call them the ride and die and stuff. I'm not so much with the ride and die in the original context, but I get it. They with you through thick and thin. I got it. I feel the same way. I felt the same way. And then I also came to the realizations and certain things that I've accomplishing my life and places I had to go or whatever uh everybody couldn't come they weren't ready they would actually be uh they work against me you know God will show you that stuff he'll show you who'll be like leeches or show you the ones who would hold you back because of their own mental block because of their own core beliefs or because they don't value you that's a whole nother thing maybe they don't value you maybe they don't believe in you <laughs> okay 
Even Jesus himself wasn't accepted in his own hometown. Sometimes people are too familiar with you. They know you too much. Or sometimes people focus only on your flaws or what you've been through. <laughs> okay? They don't see the vision. They don't see the purpose. So they hold you captive in their own minds to the things that you have done that might not have been the best choices or behavior. But God forgets all of that stuff. You bring it to him, he forgets all about it. Okay, well, let's move on now. <laughs> I need you to step in now. To, your call is still there. <laughs> the purpose is still there. I still anointed you. I didn't take that away. You had to go through this to suffer the consequences. But the mandate and the calling is still there. I have not changed. God changeth not. There's no variable, variable, variableness in him. <laughs> With a tongue twister. So... Now that you know all of this, now some of you know this already, some of you younger and you're getting it, you're learning it, or you're going to learn it. So I want you to hear me. I want you to catch the wisdom so that way you can be prepared. So when you start seeing strange behavior and strange fires breaking out around you, you will understand because you're getting ready to go to the next level. And those people that you adore so much, they just can't enter in with you at the same time or right now. And then maybe they're there for a season and that's a whole nother episode right they're there for a season praise God well, however they helped you they supported you thank God for them appreciate that but understand that it takes another level of mindset and and um oh I'm diligence concentration commitment that you have to step into now that maybe in the past you didn't, but now you understand the mandate. Now you understand the call and you have to do it. And it's like, you're not going to be able to be in the, at their pity parties anymore. You're not going to be able to hang out all of the time like you did before. And when you do spend time, you'll be speaking kingdom language or another level. And so that's going to cause a clash. And so a lot of times it's not you canceling out anybody. When they see the transformation that you're walking in, they're not going to be able to deal with it. So they're going to cancel themselves out. OK, <laughs> and you know what? I thank God for those experiences, too, because it make it easy for me. Like, OK, God, <laughs> I couldn't have done it because I love this person. I care about this person and I want I wanted them to be my running buddy, my purpose buddy, my destiny buddy partner. And God is saying, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> These realizations we get in life are something else, but they're learning lessons. And I just want to help somebody else today. <laughs> and I know, I know it's going to help somebody today. I know it because we all got to go through. We all got to learn a lesson. But that is it. I just wanted you to know that. I just wanted you to think about that. I just wanted you to be prepared mentally, spiritually. OK, <laughs> so you won't get too bent out of shape because you see the bigger purpose. You you got the vision. OK, God, I, I, I got it. I got it. It hurts. Detachment hurts. OK, when you attach, when you have a soul tie, when you have a strong connection, it hurts to sever. But it's for a greater purpose. It's for the betterment of you. And you know what? In most cases, it's for the betterment of that person. Like I said, because they got their own journey. It's not like they necessarily left behind. They have their own journey and walk. Pray for them. Hold them up. Intercede for them. Stand in the gap. And then, But you have to keep it moving. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, Cheryl's Get Your Life Back podcast. Please subscribe and share this with somebody that you know needs to hear this. Okay? Because <laughs> this was good. It's good when you get a revelation and understanding and you see the bigger picture and you got the vision and the light bulb goes on and God's showing you something You're like, okay, all right, Lord, let's do this. Woo, let's do this. I'm ready. <laughs> so get ready. Okay. Uh, you guys be blessed. Thank you. Bye-bye.